Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on refactoring Terraform modules. And today, I will be updating my CloudFront infrastructure to implement security headers. And so, if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. One of the measures that are put in place to protect websites from being vulnerable to malicious access are security policies applied to response headers. And today, I will set this up using Lambda function that is deployed as Lambda Edge and attached to a CloudFront resource. So I'm going to reuse an existing Terraform module that I have created when I did a show and tell on reverse proxy, which is what I have loaded on my VS Code session. But before I start doing anything, Let's have a look at what response headers we are getting if I hit the main endpoint on this infrastructure. So let me switch to my browser. Before I attempt to access the endpoints of my infrastructure, I'm going to open Developer Tools and open the Networks tab. And then I am going to load sonar.pablospot.ml. The page loads fine, which is a good indication that everything is working. And if I scroll to the top of this list and select the first entry and verify the response headers, this list of response headers don't seem to include security related response headers. So I'm going to use this as a baseline. Now let me switch to my VS Code session and start the work. What I will do next is expand my CDN directory inside this module. And inside this directory, I'm going to create my Lambda function. Obviously, I'm going to write this Lambda function using JavaScript. I will start my code by defining my default handler. I will need to fetch the default response headers attached to the events CloudFront response. There are a number of security response headers that can be set, but for simplicity, I will set these headers. Firstly, the strict response security. On a very high level, this is a response header that will tell the browser to access the website using HTTPS instead of a plain HTTP. The next header that I'm going to set is called the X content type options. This is set to indicate that the media types on the site cannot be modified. Another header that I will set is used to protect the website for cross site scripting attacks. I'm also going to add refer policy header for same origin. And then at the end of my code, I'm going to call the callback function and pass the new response header. So that's my Lambda function. And from this point on, I will be updating my existing Terraform module to set up my Lambda Edge and integrate with my CloudFront resource. So the first thing I will do is head to my VS Code Explorer and then open my data.tf inside the CDN directory. Inside this file, I will create an archive file resource that will zip my JavaScript Lambda function. And now I'm going to head to my main.tf 
and all the way to the end of this file, I will create the resource block for my Lambda function. I need to make sure that this Lambda function gets created inside US is one region. And I believe when I created the CD and Terraform module, I have set up the region to US is one. And to verify that this is the case, let me go ahead and open my providers.tf. And in here, the region property is actually dictated by what's defined inside my variable. So if I go to my variables.tf, it's currently set to US is one. Now let me go back to my providers.tf. I want to make sure that all the resources that are part of my CD and Terraform module are created inside the US is one region. So what I'm going to do is update the region property and set it to a hard-coded value of US is one. This also means that I can get rid of the variable definition for my region. So let me head to my variables at TF and get rid of these. Now back to my main.tf. Now that I feel confident that my Lambda function will be created inside US is one region, let me start setting the properties of this resource block. I'll start with the basic properties like setting up the description, function name, and runtime. The other set of properties that I can derive and set without creating any resources include handler, memory size, and timeout. I will set the handler property by appending the base name of my lambda function file, which I set to lambda, and the function or handler that I need to call inside the file, which I have set to handler. As for the memory size, I will set this to 128, which means AWS will allocate 128 MB of memory to my Lambda function. And then I will set the timeout to 10, which means my Lambda function has at most 10 seconds to do anything completely before timing out. I need to set the properties that will reference the actual Lambda function that I've created. So let's start setting up the file name. I will use the file name property of my data reference for my archive file. I will also need to set the source code hash. And I will use the output base64 SHA property of the same archive file. I also need to set the appropriate policies and permissions to attach to this Lambda function. And so, I need to set the role property. To set this role property, I need to create a new IAM role resource. And I need to add the assume role policy property for this resource. And in order to set the value for this policy, I will create a data reference to an IAM policy document. So let me head to my data.tl. My Lambda function needs to assume the role of a Lambda and a Lambda Edge service. And so on the identifiers property, I will add the appropriate identifiers for the edge lambda and the lambda service. Now back to my main.tf. I can then update this assume role policy to reference the assume role policy document that I've created previously. And with my AWS IAM role complete, I can then go back to my Lambda function resource and update the role property. I also want to have the published version of my Lambda function, which will allow for reference to specific versions. And so I will add the published property and set this to true. 
The next set of changes will involve attaching this new Lambda Edge with the CloudFront resource. So let me head to that CloudFront resource. I need to set the Lambda function association block on each of the cache behavior properties inside my CloudFront resource. I only have a default cache behavior on this module. And so inside this block, I will add the Lambda function association property. I will set the response headers after the endpoint origin has finished processing the web request and before sending the response back to the requester. This means I will set the event type to origin response. And for the Lambda ARN property, I will use a reference to the qualified ARN of my Lambda Edge to ensure that I pick the latest published version. And that's it. Now let me head to my VS Code terminal and prepare for the run. And now that my infrastructure has been updated, let me switch to my browser and verify that everything still works. And if I go ahead and clear this network tab, and then refresh this page, The page loads fun, which is usually a good indication that everything still works. So let me scroll up on this network tab and select the first entry in the list. And then let me adjust this screen a little bit bigger. And now the response header contains security related entries that I've set as part of my Lambda Edge function. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore ways of refactoring my Terraform modules. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.